This is it, episode number 542, No Laugh Track Podcast, Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My name is Justin Severson, get to host this each and every week. My guest this week was here almost a year to the day, practically, episode 494 back in March of 2023. Mm -hmm. Kelsey Cook is here. Hi, Hi. thanks for having me again. So, uh, is it synchronicity? Last week it was Jeff Dye, year before, it was Jeff Dye the week before you? You yes. know, I think it's not uncommon here at the club to come back almost like a calendar year. I know that Chad has a tradition of performing his birthday weekend. Yes. And so since I started working here, I've just continued to come back around this almost exact same weekend every time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been great. It's the Kelsey week. Oh, That's what they're going to forever call it. It's the Kelsey week. <laughs> so uh, nice. We got so much to talk about. We got. I want to catch up with things that uh, I know would have happened in your life. We're going to talk about last night because I was here. Oh, uh, nice. Tons of stuff. So let's see. We should start with last night. So okay. uh, first of all, every night here, I mean, you're, whether the crowd is small here at Acme or large, mm -hmm. you, you know, you could have a great time here. Some yeah. of the best shows I've seen here are with you know, 25 people in the audience, yeah. but also some of the best, it's sold out in full and nothing compares to the energy of a sold out comedy club. And that's what was here last night. Yeah. And it's, it's so fun to be a part of that. Oh, so congratulations thanks. on selling out all the shows this week. Thank you. That is awesome. And I, uh, I mean, you must feel the difference between a sold out audience versus, you know, 25 people it must give you just a little bit more energy. Absolutely. Yeah. I think especially on, you know, like a Wednesday show or a Friday late show, the type of things where you typically go into the week being like, OK, I don't know what what my expectations should be for attendance to have those shows sold out, too, is so special because it just feels you just feel like you're getting spoiled. It's like six shows that could not be better energy. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. We talked briefly before we started that you are uh, you don't have to go stay in a hotel room when you do a week at Acme. Yeah. You get to stay in your own bed. It's so nice. Yeah, I was telling you that I feel like this weekend really ruins every other tour weekend for me because I get to sleep in my own bed. Uh, my boyfriend Chad was here with me last night. It's like your friends who are also local comics come through. It's just like... And this club itself feels like such a second home, too. So, yeah, it's it's the best. Should we talk to... It's, it's pretty much unheard of, but we should, should we talk to Lewis and see if we can get a second week this year? <laughs> you know, Chad and I have talked about how fun it would be to start, like, a monthly show or something where it's just able... A place for us to be able to work out new material and not have to put the pressure on us for you know tour weekends where people are paying more money for tickets like something that is just people know going into it we're going to be working on material and have our favorite local comics on there too so who knows maybe we'll do something like that in the future that's so interesting uh so we're uh one of the things i brought here was i i'll just skip ahead to it right now because you just reminded me of it yeah um i took a look at some of the comments on your uh special that's already out there the hustler oh, which yeah. is how many views did i see it has like almost Almost three million. Almost three million. Amazing. Thank Amazing. You. One of the comments on there, I, I've listened back, of course, last year at this time. It'd only been on a couple of weeks and it already had like 450,000 views, Thanks. which is crazy. Now yeah. we're almost at three million. Yeah. Nuts. Nice. Uh, but one of the comments I saw under there was uh, I, I just go off the top of my head here. It was basically like you can tell when someone has worked all this stuff out in comedy clubs mm. versus just doing it like maybe at theaters in front of people or like sure so what i'm saying is you're, you're getting recognized for that already like do oh thanks yeah i mean you do feel really fortunate when you have a tour booked and put together by an agent or by yourself where you are getting to go get all of those reps in and then you hope that by the time you shoot the special it does feel very road tested and very like you're not just throwing some random thing out there, but it's t it does feel like there's that pressure now to get a new hour out again immediately. And so it's like quality and quantity. <laughs> like you can't skimp on either. It's it a new era like, of comedy, right? Yeah, yeah. The last several years. Yeah. Did you, how many, I, I don't recall, how many shows did you sell? Your, this is your third week that you've done at Acme, right? Yeah, yes. my third year here. Third so. Year. Um, How many did you sell out the first year? Did you? Do I you don't. Rem I know that last year I sold out 
the six shows too, but I don't remember the first year. There there were probably a few, but I don't know that it was an entire week. Yeah. So the, it feels exciting to see progress, you know, yes. and, and people wanting to come back. Absolutely. So I, uh, like I said, I was at the show last night and was waiting in line to get into the club. So many people, so much action in the club, out at the bar. I just love it. And mm -hmm. uh, I hear these women laughing really hard um, over by your poster. <laughs> okay. Do you have any idea where this is going? <laughs> no. Okay. I need Nervous. to take a sip of water. <clears throat> okay. So I look over, like, what are these girls laughing at so hard? Oh God. There's a poster of you uh, out there. There are several of them out there. And I don't know, let's see, how do I say this? Basically, one of them was cupping your boob. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. And the other one <laughs> was taking a picture. Well, that was not what I was <laughs> expecting. It's such a tame photo. I'm in, like, a jumpsuit. I look like I'm going to, like, pump gas. Like, I'm not... Yeah. Is that a uniform? No, yeah, right. Yeah, there's no cleavage. It's not, that's well, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. At least it's women. I'll I'll take that over. You know. It was two women. That's that's. It was two funny. women. I went home and told my Bizarre. wife about it, and I was like, I'm definitely gonna tell Kelsey about this. Oh my god. Uh, and then my wife's like, maybe she already knows. Maybe that's a thing that's been happening. No, there was a time. Gosh, this was maybe five, six years ago, I had a, a poster outside of American Comedy Company in San Diego. And again, this was not a like revealing picture. I'm wearing like a long sleeve t-shirt and there was a homeless guy who stood outside the club. And I mean, this was like a pretty big poster and he humped my poster for like five hours straight. I mean, I got sent multiple videos that night from people walking by just being like, holy shit, this dude will not stop. I mean, he just, I don't know what drugs he was on, but he really went to town on that poster. So that's kind of burned in my brain forever. <laughs> oh my whether I want it to be or not. So, I mean, a girl cupping my boob on a poster is uh, like the very G-rated version of what I've uh, seen people do. Oh, but, my God. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, personally, the only thing that would have made that experience better for me is if you would have, like, came around the corner and seen them doing that. Yeah. I could have seen your reaction. Yeah, there's, a, there's no HR in comedy. There's, no. you know what I mean? Like, you no, no. can't. In, like, schools, there are always pictures in the hall of, like, the teachers or whatever. Nobody's, like, fucking a teacher's headshot. It's, like, <laughs> but in comedy, everybody's, like, oh, like, run that train. It's, like, so weird. It's not at all a normal I, I saw job. I, you posted a thing several months ago. It was uh, uh, along the same lines. It was a picture of you, but there's no really description of what you were. It doesn't yeah. say comedian or anything like that. Yeah, and that one... That was partly on me for taking, you know, I've been saying, oh, these pictures are not like revealing. I did take at one point took some pictures where I don't know what I was thinking. I just I had gotten a spray tan. I just wanted to feel like good and confident in these pictures. But it's it, like the way you market yourself for comedy for I think for females, especially sometimes is so different than what you dress like on stage. I mean, I dress like such an old on stage like a lot of cardigans a lot of like <laughs> big sweaters and I I had these promo pictures taken uh you know fake lashes spray tan more cleavage than I would ever show on stage and <laughs> I did a a show at a casino in Philadelphia a couple months ago and they made a billboard with that picture but they just put my name and then the gambling hotline number there was no like comedian or anything it just looked i mean i posted online joking that it, i think people thought it was going to be like jello wrestling yeah. or something just like super racy anyway it so, reminded me of that episode of friends when they used joey joey's picture on the sctd <laughs> thing <laughs> yes i know it's like to let people know what the fuck i'm doing here because it's like no anyway no context. No. Just very strange. <laughs> so when I walked on stage for that show, I felt like I had to let people know, you know, I'm like, I don't know if there are truck drivers here who just like saw that poster and showed up, 
not knowing what it is, but I came out very again like cardigan, and I feel like dudes were probably like, "Where's the lady with the tits?" Like, well, this isn't what half the crowd laughed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw like, this. Oh yeah, not what they signed up for. But anyway, I don't take promo pictures like that anymore. So that's funny that this these women were uh, were cupping my boob while I'm in like a very you know not a turtleneck, but it's like. It's just not a revealing photo. Yeah, at all, no, it's not. It, it yeah. really isn't. Anyway, comedy, there, comedy well, is funny. <laughs> and that wraps up today's podcast. And that's all. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about my tits. Anyway. Uh, no, we're, so I'd also know that, uh, I mean, I, I, a lot of times when I know that people are just about to record a special, part of the like kind of like the pitch to get people to come see the show is like, you're about to see the best of the best of their material. Yeah. Like it's polished. I mean, the situation we're in here now is there are no tickets available. Yeah. However, for the lucky people that do have the tickets, I mean, it's an awesome set, and you are set to record next Thanks. week, correct? Yeah, next Saturday in Madison. So, yeah, I was I was a little self-conscious, actually, about this weekend because since I was here exactly a year ago, the material I was doing then, um, like, some of it is the same that I'm doing this weekend, but it was, like, the first times I was trying it's it then. So, I mean, and now it's been tested for a year and changed a whole bunch and polished up. But I always want people to feel like when they're spending the money they've worked so hard for to come see me that they're going to get a new experience than the previous time. But it just just so happened that way this time where it was like, oh, it's been it's only been like one calendar year. And I just so happened to be shooting the special next weekend. So starting after the special, that's when the cities are going to start to get like me trying a bunch of completely new stuff because i have to ditch that hour but anyway yeah i hope people are still having a fun time oh i mean you know and i uh you know i was here last night i was here last year saw the yeah. set and yeah i mean i there was a couple things like oh this uh, this is vaguely familiar i remember right this premise i guess uh -huh. but yeah but not, nothing was like oh this again or you know like, right yes. yeah, yeah, yeah oh no it's it's still fresh it's still Thanks. great yeah. yeah i also remind myself that some of my favorite comics it's like if I go see them live and I get to hear a joke that I absolutely loved, I don't like remember it word for word. I would get so excited to hear it again, absolutely. either on a special or in person. So anyway, yeah, yeah. it's I know it's a little different for everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. I completely agree. Let's see. Uh, so you were going to record at uh, Comedy on State in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. correct? Now, I yeah. know the last time you recorded, you told me about it on the podcast, that there were all these, like, uh, the Colorado Avalanche all of a sudden were playing for the Stanley <laughs> Cup a couple blocks away from when you were where we, you were recording at the time. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, someone passed out at a show. Yes. And I think that thing you said was, like, your person that helps you with makeup lost the makeup, correct? Yeah. So makeup. I need to know, are you <laughs> that same person part of the job next week? Are you going local? I uh, am, Madison uh, makeup person? What are you doing? I'm not going local. I didn't learn my lesson. I still really adore the woman who did my makeup for the previous one, but um, she wasn't available this time. I have a different woman who actually did my makeup for when I went on the show after midnight on CBS. Yes. And she she was so fantastic. So she's flying out from LA to do it. I have a local hair person that I'm going to use for the first time. But yeah, I guess the the good part of shooting a special last year where it was kind of like everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, I guess I shot it the year before it came out last year, but Yeah, in any case, yeah. To have all those things go wrong and then still get a successful product out of it I think has helped me go into this special oh, I bet. <clears throat> just being like know that s things are probably going to go differently in certain ways than you think and it will still be okay yeah, it's kind of yeah. like a wedding right everybody's always like trying to make their wedding day perfect and you just have to have that mindset of like prepare for some fuckery to happen yeah and then it'll be okay yes but yeah. yeah prepare for the worst and embrace mm -hmm. yeah totally whatever happens absolutely uh what is your history of comedy on stage? How long have you been performing there? I've never performed there. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Uh, yeah. I know. It's such a... I did not expect that. I know. Kind of an odd move to shoot somewhere you've never performed before, but I have only heard the greatest things from people. It's so many people's favorite club, and yes. I think there are a lot of similarities to it as Comedy Works, where I shot The Hustler, and... You know, I mean, talking about all these things that went wrong behind the scenes last shoot, 
I think when you pick the venue, you're just trying to go, like remove as many variables as possible. So if you know that it's really a great club and tend to have great crowds, you're just going into it feeling that much more confident in case other things go wrong. Sure. So yeah, that's a good start. Absolutely yeah. Good start. Um, so I had an interesting experience oh, I don't know, earlier this year uh, already in that I came home from work one day and my 17-year-old daughter was asking me if I knew Chad Daniels and Kelsey <laughs> Cook. She's like, I think I've heard you say his name. I'm like, yeah, I've known Chad 14, 15 wow, years probably. Yeah. I said, yeah, I know that. Why are you asking me about this? Yeah. She goes, well, I watched their podcast this morning. Huh? Oh. <laughs> I said, how did you find their podcast? Pretend problems, by the way. Mm-hmm. I said, how did, how did you find their podcast? Well, I saw a video of Kelsey on stage talking to a woman that was flirting with Chad. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Talk about the definition of viral. Two, thi- two worlds colliding, my comedy world and my home life <laughs> colliding. I was like, you yeah. got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's so cool. I love that. So uh, watch what you're saying on the podcast now. <laughs> I'll have to censor it for your 17-year-old daughter. <laughs> yes. uh, Actually, yeah. no, because I've taken her to see comedy already. I took her to see Jessica Kirsten oh a few my months God. ago. Okay, well then she's ready for anything. So you know what I'm saying. I love Jessica so much. She is one of my all-time favorite comedians. She She's unbelievably great. Yeah. yeah. I took my daughter to see her. It was. I bet you had. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you had the best time. Also funny as a dad and daughter to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a great combo. Yeah. It, it, it absolutely was. Um, so anyway, that video, by the way, I, four, 13 or 14 million views now, I think I saw. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, that's it, it's such a weird time we're in with comedy where you do have to really prioritize having a camera rolling for your set because if you do have something crazy like that happen, it can make a massive difference in your career. I mean, uh, my following got bigger after that. My ticket sales got bigger after that. It's like it's such a wild domino effect and, you know, the majority of the time, at least for me, because I don't... I don't have a lot of built-in crowd work into my set. I'm I'm more writing focused. I like to, you know, write jokes yeah. that I'm excited to tell. And if crowd work happens, then great. But uh, most of the time, you know, my shows are being recorded and I'm not getting a clip from it. I'm just trying to make the material stronger. So when something does happen, it's like, it's just nuts what can come from it. Like, there can't be anyone listening to this or watching this right now that hasn't seen that. I don't think I even need to explain what it was. <laughs> uh, but I yeah. will say that um, have you? Well, I want to ask you: Have you, because of how that's led to more followers mm-hmm. and maybe more ticket sales? Are you? Do you like owe her a thank you? Well, you know, it's funny. I I talk about As it I now. As I say, tongue on in cheek. By the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk about it on stage now. I don't know if you saw that part last night, but I sure. like, incorporated yes, it because I, I felt like okay, this got seen by so many people. I should Acknowledge say it, yeah. something about it. But I think she and her husband are planning on coming to my shows in Salt Lake City in a month or two. And so, like, I would love to actually get to like give her a hug and because she felt so bad about the whole thing. And, you know, she had no ill intentions. No, no, I think no, she clearly. Just, she probably had a few drinks and is just such a big fan of his. And she... <laughs> I was pretty excited about it. And, but yeah, I mean, it it just so happened to be one of those interactions that I'm so glad was on camera. And but, I mean, yeah. your reaction obviously so natural and was, it, it couldn't <laughs> have gone any better for uh, people seeing that. I mean, just your reaction. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> and you think it's going to end and then she just keeps going just kept, and well, adding more thing. details. I really gave her a lot of outs yeah, to no, no. be she like digging deeper. Yeah. 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 She was pretty determined to tell me how hot she thought <laughs> Chad is, which it's like on one hand, very flattering, but you know, it's, it's nice to be with somebody who people, yeah. you know, find so attractive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was like, it felt like she was on a mission to really <laughs> let me know how obsessed with him she was. And it was so funny because her husband was sitting there the whole time. I didn't even include that in the clip where he just was like, you know, nodding along, <laughs> like not saying a word about it. And anyway, it's just a very, it was a very funny, strange thing. Did you talk to them after the show at all or no? I'm trying to remember if I actually interacted with, I don't. No, because I wasn't selling my own merch that weekend. Um, but she left, you know, several comments on the videos on like each platform because 
I felt bad. Like some people were really dragging her for for probably coming off maybe like disrespectful or something. But I knew him. It was like I, I, she was harmless. I knew yeah. ultimately yeah, yeah. she just I think set herself up in a not great way. <laughs> but anyway, we interacted in the comments a little bit, and I just told her like you know I, I know everything's totally fine. But yeah, I, I do hope they come to my shows in Salt Lake City. It would be for nice a second to there. I thought you were going to say that you. I said to her. I know everything. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Let take that as a threat. I know where you live. I no. know everything. Uh, no, she. They. They really <laughs> seem so nice. So yeah, I'd be very happy to meet them after my show in Salt Lake City. So I like to, uh, you know, predict things. Like in people, like, uh, it's not fair. I'll predict things in people's career. Like I bet they're gonna be do this or do that or do mm-hmm. this. I should have predicted that you were gonna start a podcast with Chad. <laughs> I should have seen it coming. Yeah, because it makes so much sense. Yeah, we'd been talking about it for a long time, and I think we wanted to just really make sure that, A, we thought it was a good idea within our relationship to be working together in that capacity and really like bring work into our relationship, and that we were prepared to handle a whole new business venture because, I mean, you're on what, episode 500 something? Mm-hmm. Of the, it's podcasting is one of those things where once you start if you get any sort of traction you do feel obligated to really keep up with it every single week i i was part of a podcast called self helpless oh, for yeah. like 7 years and just recently a few months ago stepped away from it as i started pretend problems and uh it's hard it's hard to walk away from one so i think chad and i just wanted to make sure we were we were ready for it but it's been it's been really fun the uh the one you walked away from that does it still exist it does yes just with my co-host delaney still does it, it and solo does it now. with um she does it with guests oh okay yeah. Mm-hmm. okay but yeah yeah we started with me and delaney and taylor tomlinson uh Never we were just i know who is that uh when we were young and you know taylor got super busy and then i got super busy and it's just you know it we're very lucky that we all are still best friends and that even as we each moved away from the podcast that we still maintained such a good friendship and there was never any hard feelings so yeah, that's nice. awesome uh that must have been awesome being on her show after midnight i know you oh. mentioned it briefly already but that had yeah. to have been so cool with your boyfriend and then you're one of your clearly best one friends. of your best friends yeah, yeah. i mean i'm hosting so... a show on national tv i mean awesome yeah i'm so proud of her it was so cool to get to like on the actual show stand between her and Chad just be like surrounded by these two people I love so much and, and the Verizon girl and the Verizon girl Milana she was so funny and so sweet so I, I it's kind of hard to picture a late night show being a better time for me than to get to do it with my boyfriend and, and one of my best friends yeah that's great yeah yeah. Do you uh, I'm sure I mean I know you can't share any gossip about her in that show but I mean do you talk to her <laughs> at all about hosting and like it's got to be just um, I don't how do I how want to ask this <laughs> uh things are still going strong I'm assuming over there yeah absolutely I'm seeing they you know the obviously the guest lineups are fantastic oh yeah the the clips that come out of that show are so good and um I mean she's just such a fucking beast her work ethic to to be doing that to be doing stand-up and it's just she's just killing it yeah. so it's awesome yeah, yeah that, that's uh, fantastic so I saw the most recent episode of pretend problems mm-hmm. uh I started listening to it um you had an experience maybe with some ghosts over yes. the, this last weekend, correct? Just last weekend. Okay. Yeah. I I had never had any sort of ghost experience, encounter before, at least as far as I knew. And uh, I was in Rosemont for one night for shows at Zany's Rosemont. And they put me up at a hotel that was by the airport, like, you know, like newer-ish hotel, not some like old rickety, dusty place that you would go like um you know maybe something weird is going to happen here tonight Mm -hmm. and I started to go to sleep and the light from the digital uh, digital alarm clock kept getting really really bright to the point where I was like squinting my eyes harder as they were closed and then would kind of dim back down and then it'd get really bright again and then I heard something drop in my room and it just like the sound of it echoed it sounded so loud and I shot straight up in bed turned all the lights on and my key card was on the ground but my key card had been nowhere nowhere near the edge of my desk 
there was no reason for it to be on the ground. And I just got that like horrible, just the chills felt immediately like something was off. And also my rooms kept getting really, really cold, but like not what matched the thermostat. It would get like really, really cold and then kind of normal out again. And so I decided to Google the name of the hotel and haunted thinking that nothing would pop up and it would help me sleep. And of course I Google it and it's just like hit after hit of all of these things saying it's haunted because, (laughs) yeah, because apparently a teenage girl a few years back um, died there. She got locked in the freezer of the hotel, like one of the freezers and they suspected foul play, like this whole horrible, horrible story. And I just, I mean, it was like a sleepless night because it's so like on the road, I'm always so concerned about, you know, like my safety and security and stuff. And you're always trying to like make sure that your room is safe and like key people out. Sure. And when you realize that you feel like there's something in your room that you have no control over, because it was like midnight, one of the more, like I'm not going to, change hotels at this point uh, yeah that's a uh, well, what if tub. you had called the front desk what do you say to him like uh, yeah i don't know i mean because it's like can you send up a ghostbuster <laughs> yeah <laughs> send up a vacuum or something like there's nothing i don't know i also felt stupid like the thought of calling and saying that felt a little like oh my god how old am i but you like went into that like you you believe in that, like that this is a yeah. Thing. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, so I when I first saw the uh, description of the podcast, mm-hmm. and it said that you had a ghost experience, the first thing I thought is, "There's no way Chad Daniels believes in ghosts." <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was right, and you're I? right. Yeah, yeah he is. Uh, he's a very stubborn, very cynical man <laughs> in a lot of ways, but he. I mean, to his credit, he's like. He says that he doesn't believe in ghosts, but he also says, like, I don't know anything. Like, I I don't have any proof that they don't exist, but I don't have any proof that they do exist. So I have a question for you about this. Who are the ghosts? Like, do you think that because it was a chill that it was the girl, like, maybe this connection with Freezer, you suddenly got colder? I mean, that's what I, that's what I would assume if I were going to assume something. I don't know if other people have died in that hotel. But also, I mean, it's like I have been in places where people like many people have died and haven't had anything weird happen. I don't know if it's like because it was a foul play situation or who knows. Again, I also don't know anything. I just have been open minded enough to be like, who knows? And I've heard other people's ghost stories that seem very real and strange. And this just. This was just my first time having something happen, which to me had, it could not be explained. Sure. Like there, there's no reason that that key card would have dropped from like the middle of the desk. Did you go online and give a Yelp review of the hotel? No, I'm not a, I'm not a Yelper. I just, that to me, I used to have a joke about it. Just be like, I don't want to scare anyone away. Wink, wink. But, uh, I may have experienced something. You take this whatever way you want. Maybe it happened. Maybe it didn't. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I Clearly should. Clearly enough stories just, are already out there, right? Well, and you know, when I walked down to the lobby the next day, there was this giant banner hanging in the lobby that said, paranormal experiences down the hall in the conference center, like ghost, ghost finders in town or whatever. Like there was something going on at the hotel well, now that's... for paranormal stuff. Where, so it's like, clearly there have been other stories about stuff happening there where people want to try and find things in this hotel. So that was also pretty validating of like, okay, it's like something is there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 So when I, when I was hearing some of this, it made me think of, uh, I remember hearing about a hotel in Milwaukee that is known for being haunted. Have you heard of the Fister hotel? No. The, P F I S T E R Fister. <laughs> I was gonna P- say that's the a P- Fister Hotel. That's a rough name. Yeah, I, but, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The P- Fister. The Fister Hotel. Yeah. Uh, it's in Milwaukee, and uh, so I did a quick search of this <clears throat> earlier today, and uh, these are some examples of baseball players, professional athletes, that have had experiences. <gasps> Look at your face. I'm scared. I don't like ghost stuff, <laughs> but I'll hear it. 
Do you have chills? Are you, do you have goosebumps right now? Um, I don't, but I'm sure I will once you start doing So these, these are, uh, here's a look at the track rec- record of the haunted house and the baseball players who won't be booking a vacation anytime soon. I'm not going to read you all these because there are so many. Oh my God, okay. okay. But I'm going to give you a few of them. Okay. Uh, there's one guy named Brendan Ryan, and he says, quote, it was more like a moving light that kind of passed through the room. <laughs> the Cardinals infielder told a local TV station, the room got a little bit chillier. <gasps> See, this is what I'm talking about. Oh my god, okay, now I do. Look at my arm hair standing up. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, A guy named Michael Young in 2013, he said, A couple years ago, I was lying in bed after a night game and I was out. My room was locked, but I heard these footsteps inside my room stomping around. Another guy said uh, he had experience. I laid a pair of jeans and a shirt on a table at the foot of the bed. When I woke up in the morning, I swear on everything, the clothes were on the floor and the table was on the opposite side of the room. Oh my God! <laughs> I can't handle it. Woo! Okay, just a couple more here. Two more. Oh my God! Uh, this one, I, this one might be my favorite. Cardinals, uh, St. Louis Cardinals starter Carlos Martinez expressed that he had seen seen some sort of floating ghost on Instagram in June, and teammate Marcel Ozuna believed he had seen something similar. So the two elected to room together. Oh my God! I love it. Look at them just being like, uh uh-uh, uh, bitch. Macho professional yeah. athletes <laughs> uh-uh. rooming together. Like these guys like crush home runs. They're oh big my men. god, I love it. And then finally, uh Mookie Betts, who's like one of the yeah. best baseball players around. Oh, you lived in LA, you probably heard of Mookie yeah. Betts. Uh he this just happened last summer. He uh Dodger star Mookie Betts wasn't taking any chances. Betts said he doesn't believe in ghosts, but just in case he elected to stay at an Airbnb in Milwaukee with friends while the rest of the team stayed at the Fister. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not Thank you for telling me that. I don't know um, like if I ever do the Milwaukee improv where they put people up, but I promise I will not stay there <laughs> after hearing all this shit. Right? Absolutely right. not. All right. Well, that went even better than I expected. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, let's see. We should probably wrap this up pretty quick here. Uh, okay. Good luck to your Gonzaga team. <gasps> thank you so much. In the Sweet 16. Tomorrow. I know I'm going to be like constantly checking the score right before I go on stage. So you're still a fan. That's cool. Big fan. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's like almost impossible not to be because they're so exciting and it's like Spokane doesn't have a ton of you know huge things that come out of there and so it's very fun to root for them. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I um, I've asked a few guests this and since uh, Chad's beer came out last. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I got that was so cool. I got to ex- remember we were here for the funniest person. And I was yes. up at the bar with you and Chad, and I got to witness you two seeing. Take you took the picture oh, of the, yeah. him with the tap. That was so cool. I know what a rock star moment awesome. to have your own beer. It's like it's so cool. So I've been asking uh, people every now and then on the podcast if you if they if a company came to you mm-hmm. and said we uh, we want to put out a Kelsey Cook beverage, Ooh. what would it be? Now I, I'm going to leave it out. Like it can be alcohol, non-alcohol. Whatever you want, a milkshake. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Whoa. What would it be for Kelsey Cook? And I also mm. know that you have uh, a lot of food restrictions, so maybe you have to <laughs> I do. You have to factor that in. I suppose mm. it have to be something that you could actually uh, imbibe. Yeah, I I do love vodka, and I do. Have you ever had Saint Germain? It's an elderflower liqueur. Mm, no. But I think it would that would be cool to make like an elderflower vodka or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Can cocktail. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. They do those They're, now? All those are so fun. Yeah, that'd be that'd be very fun. I'd be down for that. All right. Well, if there's a company out there. Yeah. I live, I live close to a distillery in Hudson. If they're listening, uh, maybe you want to. Yeah, yeah. Go, go Kelsey. Uh, that'd be awesome. Oh, my God. Uh, what a dream. Let's, let's talk about the merch you have these days. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. not the, a like, couple years ago, I know it was the one that I have. It's the cool, um. The foosball oh, champion. Oh, yeah, the vintage foosball one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that one's awesome. Thanks. Last year there was a different one with ham or something. Yeah, a, a ham martini shirt. A ham martini shirt. Yeah, I feel like I finally figured merch out a little bit. It's been a lot of kind of shots in the dark over the years, but I the merch I have now is some of my favorite. We've got a tour shirt that's just like really simple. It's got a list of the cities on the back with like the map and all that fun stuff. Um the other one has a jet ski on it. I won't like give away what the back says because it's part of a joke. Um, I also have shot glasses that have a joke on there. I have keychains and I have stickers, and they're all they're all tied to jokes. So I, I won't give them away. No. But I'm, I um, tell you, I'm a big fan of uh, the the 100% tie-in of a joke on a piece of merch. Yeah, yeah. I like that. 
I do too. Yeah. I think it's fun for the people who mm-hmm. are at the show to feel like they know that they're in on it. Yes, I mean it's one um, thing to just you know like a, it says Kelsey Cook and like that that's great too. I have yeah. tons of you know comedy T-shirts from people I'm a fan of, and it's just really maybe it has their name and some sort of silly logo. Yeah, but uh, yeah, when the ones where it's like a it's a direct tie into the joke. I love those things. Thanks. They're corny, but I freaking love them. I yeah, love them. yeah. So th- I, I really like the the merch I currently have. So it's been fun to to have it on the road. Nice, yeah. nice, and it puts a couple extra bucks in your pocket, I'm sure. sure. And I, but I want to know because we talked about this last year. Did they include a typo? No, you know it's so funny. I I had to change merch companies because I needed uh, like a, a different set of things from it I, I was for a while hiring um, people to come help sell them and, and all this stuff so it, it's no longer with the company that did that initial typo and then that company the following year had done that an very fun and intentional one as a joke and so I mean I could cont- I could like have this new company okay. put one on there but I also felt like I don't know. Sometimes it's like maybe beating a dead horse. Like two years in a row with it was a fun run, but maybe three is like a little much. Sure. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I meant it. to look last night. And I, I, yeah, I, I didn't. no typos I left this in a year. Hurry. But, uh, yeah. And then I, I have a, I have a uh, merch pitch for you. Oh, great. And uh, again, this this is a, a joke tie-in, but we're not. You know, you're not going to tell the joke now. People okay. need to come to the. Well, hopefully they have tickets to come see the set and mm-hmm. get the joke, or wait until the special comes out, yeah. or maybe they already saw it on yeah. you on the road someplace else. Uh, I'm saying this jokingly, but uh, empty Amazon boxes. Oh my god, yeah. You know what's? F- I used to have. Um I had tried a version of that joke like years and years ago and then I stopped doing it for a really long time. But for a while I had air fresheners that I was selling that were little Amazon boxes. Oh, get, get out of here. That had like the little logo and my name on it. So I did oh, I didn't know have that. some merch for a while. I mean, a long, long time ago. But yeah, maybe the air fresheners are fun because they're small. And like, I think a lot of people like having some good little smelling thing. But... Um, yeah, maybe I'll bring back air fresheners. Who what knows? was the smell of the air freshener? I think it was vanilla or vanilla. something. Something real, real basic bitch, you know. That's the one you go Good with. for the masses, yeah. 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 I remember getting when I uh, got my license, all my buddies did, every one of our cars was filled with those vanilla aroma Oh, trees. my God. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Every, me and every one of my friends would have like six, seven of them. Oh, like, God. Why did we think that was necessary and cool? I don't know. It wasn't. I don't know. I just had a, a lift ride, and as soon as I got in, it was it was like the Black Magic one. Oh, yeah. And it was so overpowering. I had a headache the whole day, and I, but he didn't have them hanging, and I was like, where the where is the smell coming from? And when I finally got out of the end of the ride, I opened the door and I looked down and in the like compartment of the door, there yeah. were, I'm not kidding you, like 15 of them just in there. And that probably means they were on the other side as well. But I don't know how that guy is driving around like that. It's, I mean, that shit absolutely will start to like mess with your, I think your hormones. It just, it was so bad. It was rough. Think what he probably, you know, there's probably a backstory to that. Like he was doing Uber or Lyft or whatever for a while and didn't do that. And then this is going to overpower the bad smell of my, oh my, <laughs> my God. Uh, passengers, I, right? Yeah, it's so <laughs> weird. Chad hugged me when I got out of the car. He's like, oh my God, I can smell it on you. No. I, it was, yeah, I was like a bad candle. It was re- It was so bad. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> if I get into, Chad's like, if a Lyft pulls up and I open the door and that's what it smells, I've told people before like i can't get in the car yeah. and i just cancel the ride i'm like oh, i gotta start doing that if that happens but yeah yeah i don't leave reviews on things normally but that would uh, you'd get a star or two off if uh, yeah i know that was like oh, again and of course i just gave him five stars because i hate any sort of like confrontation or anything <laughs> like that even if it's like secret i just i don't know but yeah that was that was nuts i don't i, don't, I uh i tend to Avoid the confrontation as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask you one more thing here. So what would you do in this situation? It's happened to me a couple of weeks ago. I already brought this up in the mm-hmm. pod before. I went to a drive through uh, just ordered one sandwich, and they had me pull up, and they brought out the sandwich a few minutes later. And she's like, well, one quarter pounder? Like, yeah, thanks. And I pull away, and then I take a closer look at the sticker on top. Yeah. And it is a quarter pounder, which is what I ordered, but it had all these different variations of that I would never do. It was someone else's order. Oh. Now, would you just drive away and be like, nah. I guess eat this mistake, or do, would you go around and be like, "Are you? We need to fix this." How far away were you? S- still in the like, just about to pull out a lot. 
How many people were in line? Uh, it was, you know, between 12 and 1, so kind of busy. Okay. If it's a long line like that, I think that's kind of like a cut your losses and you're just like, well, this isn't what I ordered and they're probably not getting what they ordered. But if it's going to take that much more time to get back in line and wait, I don't know. I don't know. For me, so I've got food allergies. So if somebody messed up my order and it was something I couldn't have, I mean, I've had to like deal with that a bunch of times where then you're sitting there and it's a whole thing. But if like, if it wasn't going to bother you, I, I don't know. If there wasn't anybody in line, I would probably just like hop right back in. But yeah. That's a tough one. I hate it. That's a case by case. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think anybody, I don't think anybody's judging you for that. <laughs> you know, it's a burger. You gotta you gotta pick your problems. That's a pretend problem. Hey, hey. speaking of that, so I want to <laughs> I want to throw in one uh, personal thing about um, one of the episodes of Pretend Problems I was listening to. Somebody was talking about uh, sharing a bed with their significant other, mm-hmm. and I and I don't remember what the was it the Swedish method or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. want to brag and say that we, my wife and I, have been doing that for years. Really, separate blankets. Okay, yeah, same bed, king size bed. Yep, yep. Separate blankets. Godsend. Yeah, okay. like I, she hates a sheet. I use a twin sheet. Yeah, that's how I was raised. Yep. To have a sheet, it just feels more clean. It just right. feels right. It feels right. Yeah. She doesn't do that. She's just comforter. So and then I do both, and we just are separate, and it works out perfectly. I love that. Yeah, Chad and I might need to start incorporating that because yeah. we are like completely different temperatures when we sleep, and and all of that. We've generally been fine with it, but yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with doing that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, they need should. I mean, uh, a company should really like lead into. Uh, marketing those, you know, like mm-hmm. matching. Why am I selling? Why am I saying this publicly? Here's my ticket to <laughs> for getting out of the ghetto. Yeah, lock it up. Uh, yeah. Selling like matching twin comforters or whatever, you know, like yes. that they look like one when they're next to each other. It's one big one, but then mm-hmm. they're separate for each person. Totally. I think I just made a million dollars. There you go. No. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. I, you yeah, know, I mean, technically, me. this is the idea of this podcast is to get people to come to Acme and buy tickets. But we're, I'm not going to help you this week because you did it yourself. Oh. So I appreciate, as I've yeah, said, that yeah. Chad has done this for me many times in the past. He shows up and does the podcast when he's sold out the whole week. So yeah, thank you to him uh, again for always doing that, and specifically thank you to to you for doing this. I of course. I, will, I mean, I will say last week I was like, she'll probably do it right, but she doesn't really have to well, i mean yeah, no it's such a fun like annual it. catch up and you know it, it's just i like nice. to look at it like that too yeah, yeah yeah of course happy to do it absolutely well thank you so much uh yeah. you're watching your you skyrocketing 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 <laughs> success has been awesome oh, that's not easy to nice. say <laughs> but uh easy to tell you oh that's really nice thank you so much and i have one final question have you chosen where you'll be doing your theater show next year no, but it's it's been something I've been thinking about, so yeah, we'll see. Maybe it'd be fun to shoot the next special in Minneapolis at one of the theaters here. So, you know, Chad just shot his at the Fitzgerald, and it looks unbelievable, and I'm so proud of him. So, yeah, who knows? There's so many great, you know, I know Dan Cummins to the Parkway Theater. I was there. Oh, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, there. there's, there's tons of great places here, so... Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Chad's special, um, all I hear, I talked to him that night. I've uh, heard it. I've heard him mention it on your podcast mm-hmm. uh, where he's like, yeah, you know, in the early show wasn't the better one. It's like, I was at the early show. It was freaking great. Stop I saying that. I know. It's, we've just been through like the editing process because I watched both of them. I oh, helped okay. give notes and, and he watched both of them and he uh, has now said that he he thinks he was focusing on the wrong thing during the first show. I think he said that he kind of locked in on maybe a couple people in the front row who didn't seem like they were laughing hard. And so I think he made this mental note of like, oh, the first show's not it. And when I watched the specials, I started with the first show and I was like, how could anything be better than this show? I mean, like, it's just nonstop applause breaks, huge laughs. And so when he watched it back, he was like, oh, like, yeah, that was that was like mixed up in my mind. So anyway, oh, that's good for the hear. record, if you were the early show, he, he did really love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He yeah, was it was awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Kelsey. And uh, yeah. hopefully we do this next year, too. Yeah, for sure. Thank All you. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.